and welcome to Europal TV's Google Hangout. Under the tagline, Ideas for a Better Europe, the I-2014, the European Youth Event, is bringing together 5,000 young people from across the globe. Now, we all know that Erasmus, the European Social Fund, and the more recently added Youth Guarantee Scheme are programmes specifically designed to help young people get ahead and get work. But are they doing enough to help the 25 million unemployed young people across Europe? Does a forum like I2014 have the ideas to unlocking the endemic problem that is youth unemployment? Well, joining me to discuss this are two people who know a lot about I2014. Parliament's Vice President for Communication, Austrian MEP from the European People's Party, Ottomar Karas, and also Social Democrat MEP, Greek MEP, Annie Podimata. Welcome to both of you. And a big welcome to our participants also taking part in I2014, Christophe Anz from BMW, David from the European Youth Forum and Antonis from the Youth Future Think Tank. I ask all of you to play fair, but play well. And for all of you watching, you can join in the debate via the hashtag EP Hangout on the Parliament's Google Plus page or on Facebook and Twitter. Okay, um, Mr. Karras and Ms. Podimata, now before we get down to the business end of the debate, talk to me about the I2014 event. Ms. Uh, Podimata, would you like to go yeah. first? <laughs> well, actually, uh, the event uh, we're organizing from the 9th to the 11th of uh, Strasbourg aims at bringing together young people, uh, young European citizens from all over Europe. And the aim is to make them uh, speak out about their fears, their plans, their concerns, and present specific proposals on what Europe could do, what the new European Parliament could do, in order to address uh, these concerns. So we want to encourage them to be more engaged uh, in a better, in the shape, in the design of a better Europe. And Mr. Karras, do you think ideas can really lead to a better Europe? Yeah, let me welcome all of you, you. Uh, who are <laughs> joining us here today at the Google Hangout uh, to discuss the European Youth Event in Strasbourg. I would like to quote the singer Bono of U2, who said earlier this year, Europe is a thought that needs to become a feeling. A feeling indeed we have to fill Europe with emotions. Talking about emotions, before I came here today, I passed by a stand of the European Youth Forum, one of our media partners for the European Youth Event, where they present their 11 pledges and campaign for young European people called Love, Youth, Future. These are the emotions Bono was talking about. More than 130 MEPs have already signed it and I hope more will join later. We are looking forward to seeing you in Strasbourg and to start the debate of Strasbourg today in this moment. Okay, Libby, thank you very much, Mr. Karras. Now, Mr. Karras there was saying that he's looking forward to seeing all of you guys there. So let's now open up the debate to everyone and, and of course, the participants, all of you who are taking part in I-2014. Anton is talking about your organisation itself. Now, your organisation was born out of a, of a similar event, the Youth Agora 2013. So, you know, your, your, your organisation talks about dictating or influencing policy. So how are you yeah. going to help your organization to bring their ideas to the table at the I-2014? Um, we are having uh, some workshops during the, um, those days uh, in, um, in uh, Strasbourg, um, organized by our think tank, basically um, trying to, to uh, share our ideas uh, and call, of course, for a, a united and shared vision in all of the member states, that all of the member states should um, welcome the same principles, uh, that uh, there should be more internships and more um, paid uh, jobs and paid opportunities for young people, um, of course, social and volunteering uh, and um, uh, encouraging entrepreneurship. Um, and so let me people. ask you one thing. Do you think that internships should be paid yes. in Europe? Yes, this is important because um, it's, a, it's an uh, incentive for young people. Uh, and Andonis is, is very right. Firstly, in relation to your question, certainly internships have to be paid. And I think that the European institutions and the European Parliament is working to this direction, has to serve as an example to this direction. 
no more internships, uh, free internships. Uh, but uh, getting to the broader picture, uh, Andonis uh, mentioned the issue of uh, youth unemployment. This is the main topic of, on our uh, I event. It's the topic that is the first among the five uh, issues, topics that are going to be dealt not only politically but also in, uh, in other ways through, through cultural events for example. So uh, unemployment in general in Europe and especially youth unemployment is in uh, totally uh, unacceptable uh, levels mm -hmm. and as Andonis mentioned in some member states and this is the case uh, for my country Greece mm -hmm. but also for Spain, youth unemployment is above 50%. What does that mean? That means that uh, reducing youth unemployment, uh, creating new jobs, sustainable jobs, quality jobs, mm -hmm. uh, properly paid jobs, uh, has to be uh, uh, now that the most uh, difficult part of the crisis has gone, mm -hmm. we leave it behind, has to become an absolute priority. That's and what if if, during the if I just bring in Mr. Karras um, into this, what would you say is Austria's secret? I mean, the youth unemployment levels there are very low compared to, as Mr. Podimata said, Greece or Spain. So what's the secret behind Austria? There are many different things. On the one side, our education system, I think, is a little bit better. Uh, we have a dual education system uh, to have a partnership between companies and schools. We have the social partners, we have an agreement, a dialogue between employees and, uh, and, uh, employees and, and the business world. And I think our, we have a very strong uh, economy with, with small and medium-sized enterprises. And our economy is much more competitive. And our economy has a stronger industrial production. So we have to work on different places. But for the, the young people who asked us, so do the you European... think that maybe youth unemployment is an issue that's maybe being tackled well at a national government level, and that, say, an event like I can maybe bring together these young people and make them feel more European, and so then you know that the issue of youth unemployment can be tackled on a more European level. Both. Both? Yeah. The member states have to make their homework and the real con uh, competence is in the member states. Budgetary issues, social issues, taxation issues, economic issues, the education. But on the other hand, that is our interest. The European Parliament has been very active on this and has strongly supported improving traineeships. We organized together a, a seminar for young people of Greece and Austria uh, to come together to talk to another, mm -hmm. to create new ideas. There are lots of initiatives, but what is the problem then? I mean, why? Is you think the an problem are so the high? member states in this case. We have not enough, ma not enough money and we have not enough money to do the right things on the European level and we have not enough competences. But what we are doing now is totally clear. We need more competitiveness, mm -hmm. yes. we need structural reforms and we need money to, to push yeah. the member states in the right direction and what, what we have yeah. done is the project of the youth guarantee and the sure. youth guarantee is only one step it's not enough Do you think if i may if i may add something um, i think that uh, otmar is absolutely right that uh, uh, europe is taking all the blame and sometimes quite often actually uh, the responsibility lies uh, in decisions taken in the national level. It's a blame game who has not benefited uh, Europe and uh, uh, younger Europeans uh, as a whole. But I think, on the other hand, that uh, uh, the crisis, this very severe crisis that uh, uh, we've passed these last four years, brought uh, in the front scene inefficiencies and deficiencies in the national and in the European level and we have to take the lessons out of this crisis. On the Parliament's Facebook page, um, someone said that uh, 6 billion euros is not enough yeah. to help solve it's youth unemployment. Enough. It's not enough. And then they added... But it's the first step. And then they added that EU and member state governments can't guarantee or create jobs. It's a useless aspiration and money would have been better spent elsewhere. So. I mean, let me also bring in um, the um, 
other participants into this. I mean, what do you guys think about the Youth Guarantee Scheme? David here from the European Youth Forum. I think um, we're, we are pushed for and we're very happy to have the Youth Guarantee Scheme. We'll, we agree with the two, um, the two MEPs you have there, Mr. Harris and Ms. Podemita. It's not enough. Yeah. And it, we estimate that almost three times the amount of investment that has been put into the Youth Guarantee um, uh, two years ago needs to be put in, in, uh, in the next phase to reach um, the rest of the young people that have been left out of this, uh, of this programme. We feel that um, the Youth Guarantee is providing opportunities for young people um, in some regions of Europe, people who don't have access to uh, training or, or, or jobs or education, but there are hundreds and thousands of others that are being left out um, and they need to be, uh, they need to have access to, to, you, to quality jobs as well. Um, let me now also bring in Christoph Anz from BMW. Now, uh, Christoph, where does Europe's success lie? We've heard a lot about, you know, we need better education, better conditions. What, where would you say the success lies and, and what and how do we get that success? I think it's very important to have a most possible cooperation between the education system and companies or, in general spoken, the labor market. Uh, education has to be uh, practice oriented and uh, the education programs have to take into account the demands of the labor market on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, companies have to be involved in designing of study, pro study programs or um, cooperate with schools so that the young people have the possibility to get insights in professional practice. At the end of the day, we need a combination of a very excellent education and a respective functional And Christoph, uh, does, does, does BMW and have a good graduate scheme? If we're talking about getting better contact with young people, do you have a way in which young people can uh, come work for your company? Yes, of course. We have a lot of opportunities for both the pupils and students to get in contact with us, to get uh, professional experience within the company and we have our own programs for students to uh, get educated in combination uh, with our company and afterwards get a job at BMW. Okay, lovely. Um, yeah. Now, Ms. Podimati, Mr. Karras, I want to bring you into something else. Um, going into your backgrounds, because we're, we're talking a lot about um, internships and how young people can get ahead, but obviously success isn't easy. Um, of, of course, you're both MEPs. Ms. Podimati, before you were a journalist yourself, and Mr. Karras, been looking at your bio, um, and you were heavily involved in youth politics. So, I mean, are the problems that young people had back then when you were sort of a youth activist, are they still the same now? No, I think it's different. Mm -hmm. we, we had the biggest financial and economic crisis since the Second World War, yeah. since 2008. So on the one hand, we have to stabilize the European Union. We have to stabilize our financial sector. Our financial sector is very important to pay our real economy. 80% of the real economy is credit financed. Mm -hmm. So, and we have 80% of the European economy is a small and medium-sized enterprises. So we have a, a much diff more difficult time, but we have a time also to change the crisis, to, to go forward, to open the doors. And I think we are on a good way on the European level. And, and we, uh, we, give, we gave the right answer to the crisis. And now we have to learn what can we do better in the future. And for that so we organized the also the European values, Youth Event. We need the people on board. Yeah. We need the ideas of the young people. And one point more. I think we changed with the Lisbon Treaty. Totally the European aim. In the, in the, we have now one goal, the, social, the, the sustainable social market economy. So we changed our market model. 
We have a responsibility for social aspects. We have a responsibility for young people. The market has a responsibility for our uh, environment. And in this case, we have to work for a better Europe in the next five years with the young people on board. And Ms. Pretty much, do you think that MEPs are aware of that and aware of this? And, and also one of the themes of I-2014 is having European values. I am absolutely convinced that there is a great potential in each and every member state that has not been properly exploded so far. So if we put in the front uh, what we do have in common and we properly explode the potential of each and every people in each and every country in Europe, uh, I think that we will be uh, in a much better uh, position to deal with the challenges of globalization and uh, uh, create the ground uh, for a, a much better uh, future uh, for Europeans, especially uh, the younger uh, sure. Europeans. Overall, I think that, you know, Europe needs to be renovated mm -hmm. and that's not only a question and of Tony, aging. I can see you smiling there. Have you got something <laughs> to add to the, what Ms. Podimata just said? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, I completely agree with uh, Ms. Podimata's point. Um, and I really like the phrase that Europe needs to be renovated. Yes. Uh, and this is this should be the motto. Uh, I, I agree. I'm going to take that now. But you motto. you need to be engaged for that. It's not us that we are going to do it. It's all yes, of us together, and especially in, younger people. Mm -hmm. In order for us to be engaged, um, the European institutions should promote tools to enhance youth policy, and they should uh, um, encourage and create platforms. Uh, for information sharing, for training and career opportunities. And for example, this event, the I event to be organized in May, as we talked, um, shouldn't be seen as this huge event right before the elections. It should be something uh, constant, something where young people can come and have a contact with these institutions and show their, um, their opinions. So uh, we wanted to ask, uh, what, um, what actions are you proposing to fight youth unemployment and how, do you, how are, are you planning to convince uh, the youth to join these discussions and, of course, help you in renovating Europe. We are considering the idea How to about establish an the idea event. of a digital revolution. Is that the key? I mean, that's also one of the themes of the I2014, this digital revolution. Um, I'll give you guys a question from Anne in Brussels. And what she said is the digital revolution is mainly an American one. Um, at, le at least the intermediaries like Google, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft. So where is Europe in all of this? Are we sort of lagging behind? Yeah, firstly, I have to say, uh, we have a, a clear program what we are doing after the, uh, the youth event. We will invite the young people who chair the different working groups in the next period to the, to the special committees of the European Parliament to discuss the result, to discuss the ideas, mm -hmm. to discuss the different uh, critics of the young people in the specific committees of the European Parliament sure. with the parliamentarians who will be elected mm -hmm. at the 22 I, I, and the I really 25. Want to come and to your question, we have yeah. a total different system in Europe. Mm -hmm. the, social, the sustainable social market economy is different to the free market economy. Our, our system of healthcare of social stability is different to the United States. Mm. Our environmental policy is different to the United States. Our financial market is a decentralized market but, but, and not only but Mr. an Karras, investment for, market. For example, on the I program, um, there's one of the events is called Microsoft Codes of Future. Um, and it says, under the umbrella of Microsoft YouthSpark, this workshop will introduce participants to the basics of coding, a skill which is highly relevant to today's job market, but really found in the aptitudes of young Europeans. So what is going wrong here? We will find the European way. Yes. And I mean, uh, what is the European way? The European way any, is a sustainable social market economy. The European way is a political responsibility 
not only a responsibility of the market. The European way is a political responsibility for social stability, for health care. That is the European way. A political responsibility for the future yes. of our environment. We are much stronger economically, socially, healthily as the United States of America. And I think with the European Youth Event, we are creating a new participation model for young people to, to influence the European policy. And we do have some uh, American uh, champions, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, Google, for example. We are in a Google yeah, hangout. Yeah, the European yes, Google. But the European Google, European yes. European we can, Google. yes, we can. I mean, uh, uh, I think this is a challenge for Europe uh, in relation with uh, all our discussion. How do we make Europe more competitive? Uh, we have to work to that direction, take it full uh, uh, profit, full advantage of the uh, means and tools that the digital era is providing to us and uh, internet for example Otmar mentioned the startups before we have uh, excellent examples of uh, internet uh, uh, startups and uh, we are looking very much forward to encourage yeah. and to build on that so it's not uh, you know to uh, demonize yeah. everything that comes from abroad it's taking good lessons and uh, try to to build on that. Okay, now Our we, vision is the yeah. European Union must be more competitive as the United States, but the United States are our partners. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're going to have to leave it there because unfortunately we have run out of time. You can always watch the Hangout rerun on Europol TV's website. Just go to europoltv.europa.eu. I want to thank all of our participants and, of course, MEPs, Osmar Karras and Annie Podimata. From myself, Mariam Zaidi, and the rest of the team at Europol TV, thanks for watching and bye-bye. Looking forward to see you. <laughs>